poisoning. What are the variables in recovery? Well, this basically applies to the adult static situation because, of course, we don't need reminding that a child at birth has an enormous amount of development to undertake. So these are the factors that are the variables in recovery of a static injury in, say, a stroke patient. Well, the extent of death of tissue, and the tissue, when it genuinely dies, f is, is removed by a process called autolysis. And you're left with cysts, which are connective tissue containing water, watery fluid. And the connective tissue is called gliosis. But what about the nature and position of any preserved cells? That's going to be a big factor in recovery. And what volume of recoverable tissue has been left by the insult? So when we approach an injury in the brain, or for that matter, in any tissue, it depends on how much is dead and how much can be revived. Well, this diagram shows you where the fibers stream past the lateral ventricle in the hemisphere. These are the fibers that govern um, leg function, arm function, trunk function, arm function, face and mouth and so on, arising from the outer surface in the brain, more or less in the area that I'm pointing to, and they stream down through this incredibly vulnerable area of the midbrain. And it's vulnerable because of its blood supply. It's an end artery system. You're at the end of the supply line, but also, and this is work that was done in Germany in 1929, there are areas of this part of the brain which depend on their nutrition on veins. And of course, that venous blood in the veins is very low on oxygen. So it's kind of the Achilles heel of the nervous system, this area. And damage in this area will prevent myelination, the covering of the fibers, and can lead to a slow, inexorable progression of disability and loss of movement. Well, this is this little girl the same baby that you saw in the twins. She's called Genevieve, and this is her at one year. You can see there's a problem. The head is enlarging. The reason for that is that the venous drainage into of the cerebrospinal fluid into the general circulation, that drainage of the brain fluid, which is being formed all the time in every one of us, is being obstructed by the damage. And so the gentle pressure on the brain is making the whole head swell. Now, this can't happen in an adult because the bones of the cranium have been formed and fused. And so we just get an increase in intracranial pressure. But in the child, the head will swell. And this is not surprisingly known as hydrocephaly. But at one year, Genevieve was crawling. Now, the prognosis for this child was still the same, that by two, she would have lost arm and leg function, she would be mentally subnormal, blind and deaf. But what the neurologists looking after her didn't know was that the parents actually had a hyperbaric chamber in their garage. And in fact, nobody involved in her care knew that. The only people that knew that were the grandparents and the children's parents, of course. So she'd had regular hyperbaric oxygen therapy pretty much from term onwards and was doing very well indeed. But the problem was the developing hydrocephaly. I have a video of this child, incidentally, crawling at a year. But by two years, things had gone drastically wrong because putting in a ventricular peritoneal shunt is not a procedure to be undertaken lightly because of all the risks of infection, problems of the, the maintenance of the shunt, and so on. And so the neurosurgeons didn't want to do it, and I can understand that, in view of the prognosis. So her eventual outcome was that she's intellectually normal, she's got speech, she's normal vision, normal hearing, but she has a spastic tetraplegia, but her arms, she can feed herself. Well, hydrocephaly in itself is not normal. But it can be compatible with a normal intellect. 
And this is from the work of a pediatrician in Sheffield called John Lorber. Is your brain really necessary? Lovely title. There's down times when I doubt it. It would be better not to have one, I think. There's a young student at this university who has an IQ of 126, has gained a first-class degree in mathematics, honours degree in mathematics, is socially completely normal, yet he has virtually no brain. Instead of the normal four to five centimetre thickness of brain tissue between the ventricles and the surface of the brain, the cortex, there is just a thin layer of mantle measuring a millimetre or so. His cranium is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Lorber took five young people like this who'd had shunts put in at birth to Copenhagen where they used a PET scanner. And on television, I saw these children breathing radioactive oxygen and thinking, doing mental arithmetic. And you can see the brain light up. It's absolutely wonderful to see this. But these are the children who had almost no brain. What matters is where the brain loss occurs. In critical centers, of course, it's lethal. Well, if you put a shunt in, then you can get rid of the brain swelling. And I just popped this in to show you an elderly patient who'd, who'd got um, hydrocephalus. And these images show the, l the reduction in blood flow in a lot of areas in the brain and the effect of a shunt in restoring blood flow. And of course, not surprisingly, reducing symptoms. A most astonishing paper was published in The Lancet in 1998 that really is demanding a revision on all our thinking about the survival of brain tissue. How these Dutch doctors got permission to do this is beyond me. Let me just spell out what they did. At post-mortem examination, eight hours after death, they removed tissue from human brains. Edinburgh, of course, Burke and Hare comes to mind. The body snatchers. Sites from the cortex, from the hypothalamus and brainstem were removed. They incubated with 95% oxygen, 5% carbon dioxide, sorry, 5% glucose and some CO2 in artificial cerebrospinal fluid at 22 degrees centigrade. And they found that there was evidence of neuronal transport which was present for up to 18 hours after death. So the old idea that if your heart stops for four minutes the brain is dead is nonsense. And I take you back then to the fact